Hello, everyone. Welcome to our third week of Ojibwe storytelling in this 2024 year. We're going to be having Tinker Schumann from Lac de Flambeau join us tonight. She's just getting her things prepared. So while we wait for you guys, or while we wait, let's um, have everybody tell us in the chat box where they're joining from. Yeah. So our first person is from Waterton and then Minneapolis. And I always like to go around and talk to my colleagues who are joining us from around the state. I'm joining you from in Ashland and Tinker and her cousin came up to join us from Flambeau. So they're in Ashland tonight. Sarah, where are you joining us from? Oh, the west side of Madison. Nice. How's the weather? Oh, um, it's better. It was uh, freezing rain this morning, so oh, I bet you it can be bad really driving. Did yes. Okay, Janet, how about you? Hey, you everyone. I'm hey, joining you say? from Eau Claire tonight. Hey, um, it's warm oh, yeah. here and no more snow or rain. So nice to see everybody this evening. Yeah, it is. Thank you. It's definitely nice and warm, uh, much warmer up here. Okay, Kristen, how about your check-in? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm joining you tonight from New Berlin, which is in Waukesha County in the southeastern part of the state. Okay, great. And the weather is? Ooh, um, also icy, just like Madison. <laughs> <laughs> great. And well, thanks, Luke. And how about you, Luke? Where are you joining us from? In the heart of Madison. Nice. Yeah. And more rainy ice? Oh, yeah. Very okay. slippery on the sidewalks. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, um, it's nice to get some warm weather for a change. I really appreciate everyone joining us tonight from around uh, the state and around the country. Uh, we like to put up our little chat box map and have everybody. Uh, put in where they're joining us from. Oh, we said someone from, from Ashland, which is absolutely fantastic. We are having a watch party, but I think it's kind of quiet tonight. A few of us have all just kind of gathered in this room um, and are getting to see Tinker live as well as, as online, which is really lovely. Okay, she's got a lot of really fantastic show and tell for us tonight. And I am a show and tell kid. I love, um, I love that. I loved it doing it when I was a kid. I loved doing it when my kids were little and I'd take things into their classroom. So she's got some lovely objects, um, some mementos to share with us along with her storytelling tonight. Okay, uh, Kristen, can you go to the next slide? So our evening tonight, um, when you joined our Zoom, you were automatically muted. So none of us, uh, Tinker included, can't see you and we can't hear you. Uh, so there's only way to communicate with us is those boxes on the bottom. You can see the chat box, which some of you are using now. That chat box is going to close when Tinker is doing her storytelling. But if you do have a question for her, please enter it into the question and answer. Uh, box, which is right next to the chat box there. So, yeah. So if you have any questions for her, we'll take those at the end. So usually she's going to talk for about 45 minutes, and then at the end, we'll open it up to your questions. And again, um, you won't be able to ask anything live. So like the ha raise hand thing doesn't, doesn't really work on these. You're just going to have to type everything in, which is, which is fine. And then we'll share those with her. And if we don't get to your question, I will, what we do is our, our lovely team, uh, Janet, Sarah, Kristen, Luke, uh, we all work behind the scenes and we get together all those questions and all those comments and anything you have to share with her and we send them to her. So if we don't take your question live, um, she will try to answer them at, at the end. <clears throat> she had to step away for one quick second. Oh, someone's from Honolulu. I'm not going to ask about your weather. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's fabulous as always. Um, so, just one other quick little announcement is uh, next week we have our last storytelling of the evening. That will be me. 
So people are probably wondering, well, how'd you book yourself, Liz? I actually had a different uh, Ojibwe speaker, but he was unable to uh, make it. And so he had to pull out at the last minute. So uh, here I am. So I've got the volume up. So anyway, so that'll be the last one. And we really hope you can join us. It's going to be the same exact thing. Uh, Seven o'clock central time. Uh, I will be joining you from the visitor center here in Ashland. My colleagues, Rose and Pam, are hosting a watch party tomorrow, or excuse me, next week. And we'll be ready to go. So call Kristen. You've been able to watch this box a little longer than me. Who else do we have coming in? This looks like some notes here. So let's see. I've seen Spring Green, Horicon Marsh, Horizon Marsh, excuse me, um, St. Germain, Eagle River, Alaska. So we have Alaska and Hawaii today representing yes. our non contiguous states. Fantastic. And Ontario. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Redlands. Hey, Larry. That's one of my daughter's professors. <laughs> Arizona, West Virginia. Fantastic. Let me just check in on everyone. Okay, we're almost ready. And West Alice. <laughs> Oh, and Vidi is from Notre Dame. That's my daughter. So both my daughters, one's in Redlands and she should be joining. And then the other one is in Notre Dame. So wonderful. Are you ready, Tinker? Yep. Fantastic. Then it is an absolute pleasure. Just wanted to give you guys a reminder. We're closing the chat box now, but we will reopen it at the end of the evening. Until then, uh, take it away, Tinker. Buju and then we magna and Gizi clay and indigenous cars, do dam, Gizi, Waswagni and Dunjiba. And I want to open up with a song tonight and invite all the relatives in. This evening, um, I got a lot of things here to show and tell. So um, I'm gonna start off with um, a picture of my brothers. Can you see it? These are all the men in my family that are gone now. And um, I got my brother, Jack. My brother Frank, my brother Skipper, my brother Bob, my brother Frank. 
and then my dad's back there. So, and they're in a spirit world. So, then I have another photo here. It's called um, Jim Pete and. It's open it if that's okay. Oh, okay. Or do you want me to hold it? Closer? Yeah, you could. There. This is Jim. He um he gave me a an application uh, a recommendation for the um, Indian Elder of the Year. I'd like to read that to you. So um, <clears throat> WIEA Awards Committee Tribal Management Consultant James E P D P A. I'm truly honored to provide a. Wisconsin Indian Elder, Elders Association nomination for Mildred Tinker Schumann for the Wisconsin Indian Education Association, Indian Elder of the Year. Mildred Tinker Schumann, whose Anishinaabe name is McGeezy, our equal woman, is from Lac de Flambeau and is an elder, mother, grandmother, great grandmother, a poet, a pipe carrier, and some deeply respected in the Ojibwa Nation of the Lac de Flambeau and many others throughout the United States and Canada. Tinker attended the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe and has a Bachelor's of Art degree in education. She has two children, seven grandchildren, four great grandchildren. Well, that was at that time, but now I have more. As a noted author, a reborn and a son and co-author of The Healing Blanket in Indenue Magna, a poetry CD, she also wrote a poem call, visited in Benashi, listened to the birds about her mother walking in the woods, teaching to her child to listen. Tinker hopes to continue opening the doors for Native writers and having a place for them to pass on knowledge and resource gained at events. Due to Tinker's concern about traditions, culture, language, she is actively involved in the rebuilding the Lac de Flambeau Indian Bowl performing arts. I feel so blessed to have known Tinker as a friend, confident, traditional elder, teacher, and inspiration to myself and so many others. Tinker continues to offer so much in terms of Anishinaabe language, culture, teachings, and traditions, and is able to integrate the modern day concepts of education. Thank you for consideration and the nomination of Tinker Schumann for Indian Elder of the Year. Thank you. And then I have a, a certificate. Oh, what's this on here? Yeah, here's the WIEA. You got it? <laughs> so this is my plaque or award. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway. Now I want to move on to, um, this is written uh, 611. It's called Living Social All My Life. In my essence, breath of God's mother earth, created as one child of blessings, womb from Mother Beatrice and Father John Rotes. This began the tree of light. I grew up on a reservation, Wasagening learning from five brothers four sisters in a small house built by my dad. Three bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, an outhouse. Later came the water pump, we had water, although the trek to the neighborhood water pump was fun pulling a wagon of milk cans. Then we finally got a bathroom with a lot of toilet and sink. To take a bath, I used a round tub. Also had to heat the water in a pan in the stove. It we had an outhouse too. Outside in Mud Lake, in the summer we swam, my brothers took my dollhouse apart and made a raft. I was so hurt but got over it on account I liked to swim. We also swam across the lake with someone oaring a boat just in case we needed it. Winter, we had ice skating, bonfires kept us warm. And those bonfires were made from 
um, <clears throat> tires. School age, we had to walk to school. After school, walking home in the spring, he would use a popsicle stick and float them around. The community was small and you would know nearly everyone. Today, it grew so much, I don't even know exactly anyone unless you hear their last name. Today, we are all related, all people full of fills of animals, plants, water, and life. This here is a, uh, a pontoon or a pond, how do you say it? Pen, yeah. Um, a, preparing to do jingle dress dance in Houston, Texas. I sewed Turkish ribbon thinking heavenly. A glow international women praise and also dance. Thankful, blessed life we sing. I sew Turkish ribbons thinking heavenly. Glory to our great spirit, creator God. Thankful, blessed life we sing. My path is planned. Glory to our creator, great spirit, God. One small dust sharing Mother Earth. My path is planned. Jesus fulfills God as the sacrifice. I sew turquoise ribbon, thinking heavenly. A glow international woman praising, also dancing. Thankful, blessed life we sing, preparing to jingle this in Houston, Texas. Thank you. Okay, this next poem I'm reading is um, dedicated to Mary Ellen Baker. Um, she has the water symposium and it's going to be the first week of um, August. So, Anybody want to go on and find out about it? It would be nice to um, see you there. The Lady of Dedication for Sobriety of the Anishinaabe Way of Living. I watched her as she prayed to the Great Spirit standing before Grandpa Fire. The eagles came and flapped their blessings with her smiling face and tender dull eyes. She was a grandmother, auntie, sister to her relatives and she didn't take any credit due, as she reminded us of her dedication, that the creator makes the moves to show the way in her way of recognition for others who helped her with her suggestions. Okay. This is a jingle dress. This was a, um, made special for the veterans. And I wore this one on a powwow cruise we had with Mary Ellen. And um, I got to dance there as a lead dancer. Thank you. All right. I want to um, share this brochure. Okay, everybody see that? And now it says, a tree of life transcends our world to the path in a spiritual awareness of preparation. Now is the beginning, the rebirth. It goes, a tool. I'm the father, the son, the spirit, the three trees of life, branches that caress vibrations, Shadows darken in the background. I stand watching and given direction. I am the path of horizon, the heartbeat. Spiritually, we're one. Three nights, three morns, and the fourth fulfills offering. I'm a tool used of harmony, a mother, a brother, and sister, father, grandma, grandpa, each power unison. I'm the purifying season, the life aftermath, the new life season, the covering quilt season. I am you. So I think everybody's a tool in that you have to find out where you are, who you are, why are you here, where are you going, and how are you going? And then you can, um, you know, help people, or maybe you do. Today, my relatives, this is your beginning. The great spirit enhances all circles in harmony 
the mystery spirits come from within. Lessons and knowledge spread with the eagle flutters and the four sacred directions help prepare. Today, my relatives, this is when the grandfather's son, the grandmother moon revolve and the medicines of mother earth heal. The path of our struggles have, have not lost the spirit of ancestors. While younger generations are, you are the softness of woman and the kindness of man. Sharing the sacred hoop, it must be to be clear of understanding. So now my relatives all are related. Thank you. Okay, this is um, a portfolio that I just put together. And um, this um, next poem is called, We Are One. We are one, we are one, a cycle in grandfather's sun and grandmother moon, our sister morning star and brother evening star. We are one with the four winds touching and a tree relatives give us breath. Mother Earth heals, provides life in our struggles. We are one each sacred morning, the eagle awakes with guidance, blessings as he protects. We are one hearing our grandfather's drum, given the culture in this contemporary era. Together we shall travel in harmony. Okay, um, I got a picture of my great grandmother somewhere here. And I'm gonna read read to you about her. I had another f folder and I can't find it where I had her picture. Your great grandmother, Bindiganasanukwe, Oh, that's my grandma. Sorry. <laughs> What's this one here? This one? Is this great grandma? Let me see. That's my grandma. Okay. On my mother's side. Okay. Okay. I think I might have one. Yeah. I got a small picture of her. So. <clears throat> oh, here's one. You want to show that? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. That's my great grandma. And I'm going to read about her now. Okay. <laughs> Dear Mildred, your great grandmother, Bindigan Asanukwe Sophie Shadema MacArthur, was born to the Lecta Flambeau Band of Lake. Superior Indians. Her birth was not recorded. Your great grandfather, William MacArthur, was born at Prince Edward's Island, Canada, in 1854 of Scott and Irish parentage. I figured Sophia was younger than William by may maybe a decade. In the late 1880s, Bill and Sophie homesteaded a 10 acre island on Lower Trout Lake in Violets County. It was during the presidency of Teddy Roosevelt. From old maps, it appears that the Trout Lake had been part of the Lake de Flambeau Reservation. Grandma had brothers and sisters. The ones I knew of were Annie Pine's wife, a Bob Pine, a Mrs. Redmond, a brother, Yibe Gajic, and Jim Shadoima, father of the late Jim and Joe Shadema. William and Sophie, had eight children, William Jr., who was called Bolivar, Mary Chapman, Rose, who died in her teens, Katrina Schumann, your grandmother, Addie Engel, my mother, Robert, who served in World War I, George, who became blind and lost his leg in a childhood. He attended the school for blind at Janesville, where he learned to read and write Braille and was fitted with an artificial leg. The youngest was uh, Margaret, Maggie, and Catfish. <laughs> Need some water.
Grandma cared for the sick and delivered babies. A Mrs. Blaisdell told me that Grandma had delivered her son, Jack, who has, may have been the first white born baby at Trout Lake. Grandma made maple syrup in her early spring. She had land just outside of the village of Flambeau, her sugar bush. She built a birch bark wigwam and shed for boiling sap. Most sap was boiled down to sugar as sugar was easier to store. Her sister Annie Pine and Annie's husband helped at the sugar bush. On the island, she had a garden which she tilled with a grub hole. Horn both sweet and varied colored Indian type, knobby Hubbard squash, giant pumpkins and potatoes are some of the crops. A rhubarb patch was behind the house. Two apple trees and plum trees grew in the front yard. The house was a two-story hoe and log house. Every spring, Grandma papered the walls with newspaper using flour and water for paste. She tanned deer hides. The hides were soaked in a solution, then stretched on frames to have a hair scraped off with a wooden paddle. The final touch was to put the hides teepee over a hole dug in the ground with a slow fire smoldering, producing smoke. Then she worked in the hides with her hands to soften them. I have a beaded and fringed handbag that she made for me 60 years ago. In mid-July, we went on to a boat at the end of the upper trout lake for blueberries. Sophie fixed a lunch of bacon and salt pork sandwiches and at noon made green tea with the water boiled over a wood fire. Tea has never tasted as good as it since. It lacks the smoky tang of the fire. Grandma was a healer and preparer of medicines. Often I copied her on her herb gatherings. We crossed the lake shore west of the island. I felt safe when she brought her long handled hatchet. I believe that she could have slain an animal that dared to attack us. We searched through the woods, taking bits of tree bark, chips of wild cherry, pieces of the roots, and clippings from the scrubs. Porcupine was one of Sophie's favorite trees. If we came upon one in the forest, she took her hatchet and hacked the tree down, then ran to the other end of the tree where she smacked the slow slumbering porcupine in the head. It was wrapped in a bag and brought home where the needles or quills were scorched off over a fire in the backyard. It was a delicious when cooked. My special treat was the porky's tail. Some of the herbs and chips that she had gathered were dried and powdered over. Others were cooked with water and sweetener until thick and poured into containers to set until it came became like hard candy. She made little birch bark containers for the medicines back Indians. Both Indians and white people brought her medicines. Grandma sewed her own dark blue calico leg of mutton sleeve blouses and full gathered skirts on an old treadle singer sewing machine. When the machines were temperamental, she got a whack from her with a hammer. And then it went on humming away again. She made deerskin moccasins that she wore most of the time. On occasion, she wore black ankle leather boots. A fringed wool shawl she wore over a sweater and a light jacket. On her head, she wore a dark beaded barrette. The shawl was sometimes used to hold fussy babies on her back as she walked about to soothe, soothe them. Grandma smoked Prince Albert together, tobacco and a shiny brown pipe. Sometimes she peeled a dried bark from the Koniknik bush and smoked it in her pipe. During bad storms, she sprinkled tobacco over fire as an offering to money due. Although all the children except Bolivar was baptized Catholic, she stayed with the Indian worship. She had special vests and other garments decorated with beadwork that she wore to Powell's and Flambeau. Just before she died in September 1950, she was baptized at the Sacred Heart Hospital in Tomahawk. She had, she had always been a walker and walked when she got hit by a car. 
and she walked along the edge of the road in Flambeau. The driver was drunk. Grandma was taken by ambulance to the hospital in Tomaha. She had a broken leg and other injuries. It must have been hard for her to accept care and she always been the caregiver. There were also the language barrier where she could understand English fairly well, but couldn't speak it. Someone had to stay with her to communicate with the doctors and nurses. In the summer of 1950, there was an epidemic of viral pneumonia. She caught it while at the hospital. We felt that it was caused by her death, along with being weakened by her injuries. She was buried at St. Anthony's in Flambeau, where Grandpa was buried in August 1933. Maggie Catfish had a six-month-old baby who died a couple of days before, after Grandpa died. Grandpa and the baby was buried together in the same casket. Grandpa and grandmother took care of many of their grandchildren, especially their dad, Mickey, your Uncle Max, Sophie Chapman, Marcella, my brother Bill and me. Grandma was always doing and helping. And from what I know about you, Mildred, you're doing and teaching at, at the Flambeau. I know what you would be proud of. I know Grandma would be proud of that. I hope that you continue with your good work to keep alive the Chippewa for the future generations. And that's her letter. I was working at the Trails program, testing realities and investigating lifestyles. And then when I read this letter, it really gave me a boost, you know. I think we all need a boost. So that was really nice that I could um, have that of her. Oh, here's another one. <laughs> I have to get this out of my folder. <clears throat> this is just a, a drawing I did. For all you people that are trying to stay awake, stay clean and sober, you don't need that crutch anymore. You think you do, but you don't. So I think we all have um, a good spirit and um, we need to take care of that. So. Niya Bumarzin, water is life. I love to recognize my ancestors who prayed for us through ceremonies. First, we are medicines cultivating their own spiritual programs. I became a living expression of the higher truths that discover life. To become a teacher for those who are seeking water. Findings are the butterflies expanding themselves. Their spiritual truth appears and a fine truth and family and a heart family and a great spirit, girls dancing, representing them for transportation, transformation. Recently, I've been in the Women's Heal Retreat Center, Deerfield, Massachusetts. Be alive and joy and do this. Be glad to have a joy by growth and faith and trust. Inner stresses in every day that grows each day to the living spirit of eternal spirit. He listens to his children. Furthermore, look at the waterways wa. Ki gadha wain da min ni bi mi gwa bimase ya. The purpose of this event is to energize, honor, pray for Mother Earth, love, blood, the water which brings healing. This evidence is everyone, everybody. Second, introduce yourself to John Johnson. First of all, I want to show this picture back here. The lady that had this one here, she, um, oh, Pat Pasilli, Lake, Lake Tiha, or something like that. She just passed away here a little while. Do you want me to hold that closer? Oh, okay. And then I had this picture taken of me standing there. And I was looking out and praying, closing the, you know, the prayer, the Wadawa. And she um, 
if you look in the waters, you know, you'll see some things. And um, so I'm really thankful that could be that way. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the woman in water. And this is Mary Burns. And um, she asked me to be part of it. So, there it is. I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> it's too long. But I'm going to read um, a poem called Navy. Oh, here's some more pictures. When Josephine was here, we went up there and um, I did this walk here and, and got that. Um, it was a good feeling being with um, Josephine. I think I have a picture of her somewhere. Let me look once. Or does somebody want to look for me? What's she look like? Um, she looks like an elder. Someone <laughs> <laughs> well, does not narrow it down. Okay. Maybe in one of these? Was it in one of these? Or this one? No. No. Well, anyway. Okay. You can't find it. Here's one. It's an elder. Oh, that's my mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, I'll just read this. Nebi, like one sacred drop bringing the refreshments, pondering the newness while creating change. The ancestors are watching. What will I do? Our voices give proclamation, our invisible arts. Bring a teaching venu as we taste Nebi, healing from Nebi and all water life's begun to survive. The great spirit, heart is a good medicine within. From all parts of the world is being acknowledged of the thirst that different nations need to survival. The bloodline veins, tributaries of all sizes, lakes, ponds, oceans, seas are the blessings of the spirit for our offspring descendants from generations to come, this mother earth. Worldwide sharing is life, protection of the life. Givers being the leaders to bring awareness. Wake up, fight the pollution, save the families, sing your song. Say your humble prayers and the mighty spirituals. Rise, 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 rise. So thank you, Mary Burns. And then she has um, her worldwide one in this book here. So I, mean, I made this book too. <laughs> so thank you. If somebody wants to get that down, you can uh, purchase these books. And Women and World, Women and Water. Oops. That's later. That's later. Okay. And I pulled up the YouTube. Is it Water Walk and Flamble? Is that the YouTube you want? Yeah. Okay. I'll put that in the chat. Yeah, it was the second one. Oh, the second one? Okay. Yeah. Seven years ago? Yeah, I think okay. so. Gotcha. This is for my um, grandmother, Sophie Shadema MacArthur. Admit on the Kubijigan, the Kum is Bindigin Asanuque. Then the Kum is Bindigin Asanu in the winds. I hear your voice singing love. 
I feel your presence in the prayers. This is your answer as I walk, Akina Mama, Mother Earth. I shall walk with pride as Anishinaabe remember the teachings and survival needs. The hardship our people have been through and, and yet today. I heard stories of how you would walk many miles. I can imagine your long skirts brushing against the earth. The people said that you would heal Indians and non-Indians. The great spirit looked down with blessings as I follow your path. It's hard to try, but my faith keeps me in balance. Great grandmother, I say me good for your gift of life. I continue to live here with much gratefulness to our sacred breath of life. Okay. We got a message that Grandma Josephine is in the tan skirt on the left. Is that who you were looking for? Is this her? Oh, yeah. Okay. We found her, the one you were mentioning. Yeah, you want to. Oh, sure. There we go. She's this one here? In the middle, yeah. Okay. That's Grandma Josephine. Mary okay. Ellen and oh, yeah. Huh. And um me and then Cheryl Boyd and Misty Jackson and Chris. Chris. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Thank you, whoever sent that in. <laughs> okay, for my mother right here. And at home I have a great big picture of her that um it's too big to bring. <laughs> mother, mother, the rays of sunlight enter and brighten the cycle of one sun and one moon. Mother, the winds breeze and touch me with your caress, and I know your heart of warmth is with me. Mother, I touch the earth, vibrations of spirit and fluttering of eagles direct, and I know you are with me. Mother, the water pounds, pulse and canals of shimmering waves to give quench. Love reveals and heals hard times by your eyes. Mother, the pathway I have taken and returned home, the earth has awakened hard times together. Tobacco aid my understanding. Mother, the comfort is unseen, patient awaits the circle of motherhood is blessed. Thank you. Well, I wrote that poem um, years ago. And uh, I had a book called Reborn in the Sun. And my oldest sister, she passed on. And um, we came home and my second oldest sister and I, we put the moccasins on her and, and said some prayers. And so this is a tribute to uh, my sister, June. She was there when she died in 79. It is a one year cycle since grandfather called you. I remember the drum, the three brown spirits who snapped pictures hours before he called. I remember how you called my name as I ran over mother earth. I knew your journey started. Tears blinked, wet in the eyelashes. I remember the mugs and the second oldest sister and I dressed, the shawl of four directions and the last meal. Tears of your journey still bring a lump, but stop. Knowing that one day when it's my turn to join to the spirit world, we will be united. So my sister, June. This is called Almost Before the Almost. My grandmother said as we spoke of Mother Earth's children and relatives, like the rainbow bun in the father's sky, I see the eagle fly with hawk relatives in the morning star, evening star together. You will understand that patience. Your almost is the sun horizons and sets. When the creator hears the offering, Four directions touch you, along with Mother Earth. You're almost in each 12 months moons, and the mate, your eagle man, touches the mother and all relatives, me in harmony. To love and to share has been given by your grandfather. Be good, grandmother, your vice is strong. This is my for my sister Rita. 
My sister, second oldest, the tool of strength, grows tall within the trees. My sister said, birch bark grounds for your poems, reminds me of grandfather's scrolls. The nature and care of Mother Earth, you walk in the moccasins of the four directions, my relatives. The drum beats in a distance and echoes spirit grows. Eagle whistles, pipe man, they hear our prayers. This one's called Collected Artifacts. I hear the grandfather, the creator. My heart throbs with hurt to see how the white brother has crawled and bought the grandfather's drum and pipe. He waited anew by selling him off fire water, his collected artifacts. The spirit you gave, the prayers for the red man rekindled, and the younger brothers and younger sisters, cousins of all nations, share the spirit. Hopeless is in the past for its time when the thunderbirds bring messages and the winds of the four directions and Mother Earth quiver with earthquakes. Past grandparents were afraid of strange white brother, for they called red brother friend but stripped and assimilated while pride left and the missionary protectors don't understand. You gave us a spirit to care for our mother earth and all relatives. Grandfather, eagles carry the prayers and sun dancers dance and the drum of our ancestor hasn't left. White brother, the artifacts don't belong to you and give your heart peace in return to the red man, his life. This was um, up, up in Flambeau and they had a building there and I walked in that building and I could feel, you know, something there. And, um, and I just walked away for a while and then came back and I wrote this poem. And it was terrible, but that's what they did to us, you know, so. And a lot of things happen. We never know what's going to happen. So, you know, we got to keep our faith and we got to be strong and we got to be ready, you know. So I think, you know, when you use alcohol or drugs, you're not keeping the faith and you're not being strong. So trust in yourself, trust in the people, you know. This is called Lost in the Party Life. When I was lost in the city, gray enhanced my virtues, but my virtues are not bad. It's fun I'm having here and there and bar hopping to check out the scene. Walking or riding to any place in the atmosphere reeking of sewage, a bar laughing, carrying on, munching on old stale potato chips, the intense noise vibrating in their ear. I never promised you a rose garden is pounding out of the jute box. <laughs> The city outside full of concrete, cold and desolate. I order another drink and think how its shape of the bottle is the contents and its fake plausibility to escape and the object is to get drunk. A game played conscious or unconsciously of a fox in its bee, eating pizza and sipping beer, telling jokes or stories and carrying on, laugh or cry I hear. Old blue jeans and the uppity pretense suits the different people dress. Wishing you could be like a dandelion for it breaks the insight to the life outside freely. The weather is stormy, which echoes the confusion and hazy feeling you get after consuming a feeling lost in the city. Inside drowning problems in a building called a tavern. And if things aren't working the way they should not to be, the men in the paddy wagon take you away to a place where they can handle the lock and handle the situation. Even the bar to go home or some other place, you could hear the humdrum of voices and the music blasting loud. If you don't get in trouble and the game is played and end up turning your partners on in a literary scene, bar rooms to bedrooms and experience is until again, but there's more to life than being lost. Heavy duty. <laughs> This is called a tree. A tree, it life begins from the ground, such as I. It has a unique purpose for everyone. If there wasn't a tree, we couldn't breathe. It reaches up to the heavens with pride and admiration. Comparing myself with a tree, I'm here on the earth for a purpose, not to benefit myself, but others. A tree shares itself, and that's what I want and like to do. 
leaves rustling, listening, helping, and the branches a tree has, would it be my arms, my invisible arms, touching and crescent and tenderly understanding? The roots are planted and I mustn't forget who I am no matter what I do or where I go. Okay. This is for my daughter, Teresa. Teresa is my flesh and blood created by a will and not only mine. Her eyes are the color of cinnamon and her hair is the color of woody brown. My daughter, Pico Se McQuay, is the sunset lady. Vigorous emotions strike horizons. Kind and gentle, gentle, reminds me of apple pie. From her growth to a seed to completion. Each year she ripens to fulfillment and she serves her pur purpose, not for me, but for, my, for herself and for whoever engulfs her abundance. The light surrounds, the birds make music. Wait, me, mama, I'm still youthful and I will conquer each thought daily. Thank you, Teresa. My son, my son wears a bandana. This was in the first grade, our kindergarten down in Milwaukee. And he was being, you know, ridiculed for having long hair. So um, I decided, well, let's go to your school and take your regalia with you. And you're going to show him, you know, you can dress up and explain this. This is why you have long hair. He's aware of the classmates mocking his long hair. They call me a girl sometimes. Why can't I cut my hair? He's aware of innocent prejudices taught by the families, the first culture they don't understand. He is aware that he's Indian, different from others. Be proud of who you are. Grandfather created you. Others show their ignorance first. He is aware the teacher asked if he could bring his traditional clothing to school to show his classmates. He is proud. He is my son, and he will wear a bandana. <laughs> so, woman to woman. Oh, I found my ticket. <laughs> Door price. How tolerance is exploding in atmosphere. No peaceful atmosphere in your lodge. Is it because your warrior consumes plenty of fire water? Is it hard to live with plans of warrior while he plays? Is your heartache realizing destruction with not a care? Is it a man you really wanted to share her life with, drowned, drowned in his own world of fire water, disabled? Woman, grandfather and grandmother see your sad sparks and help to ignite life with winds to set you free and be you. This is actually my first book I wrote. And I was a sun dancer and I came and did some, oh, there's a picture in the back, you can look at it. <laughs> is it, can people still buy that? We've got no, some this, questions. No. Okay. Not this one, but I do have a book. Where'd it go? It's okay. Okay. Oh, here it is. Okay. And people are asking if can we can, can we post your, Poems yeah. you read? Okay. Oh, great. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Tinker said it was okay that we can post the ones she read because I know a lot of you really loved it based on the comments we're getting. So um, since it's no longer published, but this one you can buy right now. Okay, there's that one. And then another book. And then what's this one, Mildred? Tinker, what's this one about? Oh, CD. where am I? There am I. This is a CD of music or poems? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, I'm going to go type these in. Thank you. The Sweat Lodge. She remembered the Sweat Lodge. She remembered Cedar fulfilling, given clearance of purity. Each person came for a purpose, a main purpose and an individual needs to talk, pray to the great spirit. A warm smile silently inside filled her heart even though she knew 
she didn't know already a kinship. This is for Kathy Najakwa Makwa Bear Woman, aka Kathy Borkenhagen. And this is up in LCO. At the women's gathering held in LCO in Sawyer, Wisconsin, she entered the archway door of the longhouse wigwam, dressed in a buckskin dress, her aura carrying the light of rainbows and flickering sundog rays. Our eyes greeted each other on this gifted fine morning. Setting, we waited for a direction, and songs were sung for the sacred bundles, our sacred pipes filled. The birds and wind surrounded us with strength, drinking water, the river of life, blood of the Mother Earth, spiritual essence of our elders listened. The Jaqua Makwa spoke how she helped others with healing, claiming specifically in a vessel transferring energy throughout her sacred hands. The spirit of God guides them in letting the stresses, spiritual, emotionally, physical, mentally, and release. The Jaqua Makwa called, talked, her sweetness, Mother Honey, setting upon Mother Earth, changes of the season. Each day is a change of inner healing. Since this time, there were many events as we become close sisters a bouquet of flowers, old highways of kindness, driving a convertible fit for the Ogichida Kwe woman warrior, ending at Johanna Fine's teas for lunch, Rib Mountain for the pipe, ceremonies, dancing at the powwows, eating fried bread, tacos, and the annual Bear River powwow. In Lecta Flambo, she is the bear who strengthens like many roaring waterfalls in every moon ceremony, I handed her the offering of Kaniknik red willow, Anishinaabe tobacco from the sacred red willow trees, while wild rice and fish. The Shakamakwa is the pointing of sacred hand, transforming energies, saying, the Father God's spirits helping us as she is a vehicle Honor to have her pray for my healing once a month as I travel to Wasa Alternative Health. Let your stresses release with calmness, music, sage, smudge fans, the aura. Miigwech, thank you, my bear sister. The journey unfolds now and forever. I gotta have a drink. You about ready to take some questions or do you got one more poem? Yeah, we could do some so questions. Some questions? Okay. <laughs> Mm. Okay. You ready? Okay. Looks like we've come we're getting close to the end of our program. So we're going to take some questions uh, that have come through. Uh, the first one has to do with some of the the water walking you were talking about. So someone said, I hear that you often speak of the spiritual nature of water. Can you say more about that? Could you say that over again? That you often speak of the spiritual nature of water. Can you talk more about that? Well, <clears throat> water is a life giver, you know, so we need to uh, respect and honor it every time you go by it. And, um, and then we have water ceremonies. So we were going to show a video of a water walk and that didn't pan out so oh we put we put your video in the link so oh. my colleague Kristen put it in the q a i believe so please please uh click on that link and see the video that tinker's talking about okay yeah they can watch that um another one is why is water so strongly associated with women because we're the life givers and we have to take care of that and also that um, everybody should be doing that, you know, not just women. I mean, we take care of all nature stuff. Okay. And then someone else said, I appreciated your beginning drum song and would like to know what you can share about the literal and spiritual meanings of the song to you. Oh, yeah, that was Bindigan um, Asanuki, or Bindigan Money to Love. Well, this drum here was the first drum that was given to me. It's my, um, when I was going to the Institute of American Indian Arts, 
Bill Sutton gave me this thing, and then um, we sat sat there in our little dorm room we had. It was like I call it my educational cell, but um, I had a room there, and then you just have a chair in there, and then you know small. So then I had just taken pound on it. I got a song. Yes, I am going to that big reservation, you know, going under the eagle's wing, Yahweh, so went like that. Miigwech. Someone else asked. Um, they love that song. A lot of people love the song, and they wonder what permission they would need to, to sing it with their friends. Uh, someone said she's got some Native women friends she likes to hang out with. And is it okay to sing that, or is that your song, or how could they get permission, or should they write their own song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my song. So we have another one. This one's from way at the beginning. I think when you first mentioned a little bit about yourself, all it says is, "What is a pipe holder?" A pipe holder? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I don't have one here, but um, <clears throat> it stems back from when I was um, sun dancing and all that, and um, Wallace Black Oak was there. And he said that um, the spirit sent him to me. So I said, okay. And then he said, the next thing is you're going to get a pipe. You can either give it to uh, go to this lady named Mercy Turning Bear and then uh, or go to Pipestone. So I thought it over. I said, I'll get some gifts together and we'll go to Mercy Turning Bear. So then I got my pipe and they brought me back to the Sundance, I was sun dancing then. And then uh, took me into the sweat lodge and there was 50 grandfathers in there ready to meet me. <laughs> so that's how my, I got a pipe. Thank you, Tinker. Mm -hmm. Well, we just arrived at the end. Do you have any parting comments for us, Tinker? Otherwise, Christian's gonna put the goodbye slide up and how they can get a hold of you. Oh, we have had some trouble with getting the links. Uh, we can we can put those on our on our page. Okay. So if people are having trouble with all the links that we're referring them to your books and to the video, um, we'll get those out to folks. No, I just um, like to wish everybody uh, to pray every day, and as this world is going to the way it's going, so maybe you could help strengthen people and you know talk to them be happy and be joyful. So that would be really great. Miigwech to everybody in Denaway, Maganug. I got Midge Montana sitting back there and I got Sally. So um, thank you. Miigwech. Miigwech, thank you. Okay. A beautiful evening. Um, I'll show you all these delightful comments later, but um, lots of love. Send it back to you, Tinker. Okay, this thanks. is how you can get a hold of her. You can get a hold of her via email. She is a very oh, busy lady, so I can't she's gonna be get, get a hold, gonna be able to get back to everybody, but she'll, she'll do her yeah. best. Yeah. And if you have more, uh if you yeah. wanted to hear that song again, oh. or if you wanted to hear any of her stories again, you know, it's recording all of it. You know, <laughs> by the end of this week. Uh the other two for Tina and Sorella are already up. Um and Tinkers will be this week. If you can see that on our Ojibwe storytelling page. Okay, can you put the next slide up? I think we went the wrong way. There we go. 
This is how you can get a hold of us. We are all over the place on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. All of our videos uh, for our Joy Storytelling do live on our YouTube page forever and ever, as far as I know, as far as I know about YouTube. And so they can always be accessed there as well. If you have any comments or questions, um, you can certainly send those to us via these avenues. And we hope you follow us and you learn more about our uh, wonderful program. And we get some exciting things going on. Ah, next week is me. So we have our last week is going to be with me, January 30th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, and um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be, uh, it's hard to follow these ladies. Uh, these three ladies are all of my idols uh, growing up and as a as a young woman, as a growing woman, um, lots to look up to in these amazing women that you want to look at this. And, uh, but I'm just going to share with you some kind of little tradition stories um, and I hope you can join us. Anyway, everyone have a good night. We look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. Oh, I forgot to tell my story. Ha, ha, ha.